Hello, everyone. I'm Denton Davidson, senior editor for Gold Derby, and I'm here with Jack Alcott, who plays Harrison Morgan on the Showtime series Dexter New Blood. Right off the top, Jack, you know, what was your first thought when you when you learned you landed this role as Dexter Morgan's son? Oh, man, it was a, <laughs> it was a series of, of thoughts. I, so I, I initially knew literally nothing about the show. I was I was not old enough to watch it uh, when it was when it was airing. And so it was something that was always, I knew that it was a great show and that, you know, a lot of people watched it. And when the audition came in, I was like, oh, this is cool. But that there was sort of nothing to contextualize that. And so, and then of course I, in, in the audition, like the, the, my character wasn't called Harrison. It was, there was a fake name. I was auditioning for Randall, um, who sort of was like very vaguely described as like, you know, a likable kid but you know he's got something going on and I was like oh he's definitely gonna be a bad guy like this is this is so cool and um like throughout like a series of auditions some of which went wonderfully and some of which I thought went terribly and I guess weren't terrible <laughs> um learned oh this is Dexter's son and then I like later in the audition process started I should I should start watching the show and was was sort of trying to binge through uh season one and was seeing how far I get but when I got the role I I flipped out and and it also like the the scope of the role in this season was not at all was was not given to me whatsoever it was just like oh he's like his arc is goes through the show oh it's one of those yeah it's a role in the thing and I was like great um and so it really it really hit me when while I was watching season one and when I received the scripts because like this was, it was all already written. Um, and so when they sent me the material, it was like, here's all 10 episodes, here's all 600 pages. Um, and I knocked it out in less than 24 hours. Like I sat down on my couch to like get a taste and like didn't leave the couch. Unless it was like shut the computer and like dance around because, oh my God, like, this, is, this is so good. I can't believe that like, <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this soon. Um, I actually called, uh, or Mar Marcos, um, our direct, one of our directors and our, one of our EPs, uh, called me shortly after to say like, congratulations, this is going to be great. Um, and I sort of said to him, look, man, he asked if I'd watch the show and I was like, look, man, um, no, I'm so sorry, but like, I'm, I'm going to, like, I've budgeted out my time. And if I watch seven episodes a day, uh, you know, six days a week, I will be able to knock the show out before we start. And he was like, <laughs> don't don't fucking do that um you, you it's totally unnecessary you know I, actually I would encourage you not to watch anymore please please stop watching which initially confused me but um he was like look man like a tonally you know this is this is later so it's, it's going to be different in a lot of ways but most importantly Harrison's not privy to any of this um what his dad is and what he does um he's just a normal guy a normal dad it's the only memory that you're going to have of him so you come into this show with all of these questions and for you to, you know, as an actor also not have the answers, I think it's going to be nothing but helpful for you. Um, which was like, ding, like, oh, of course. Um, yeah. And it uh, was ended up being very, very true. It was, it was really cool discovering things as we read and like, it felt like there was more room for surprise um, when we were working, uh, uh, having, you know, two, two pieces come together, like in my brain, like as we're in a scene and you, you know, have, having a genuine light bulb moment, like when the camera's recording is like the most gratifying feeling ever, <laughs> whether or not it makes it into the show. Maybe, maybe they use a different take, but like you can walk away from that scene going like, oh God, it was so real. It's, <laughs> it's goofy. <laughs> what was that like then going toe to toe with a pro like Michael C. Hall, who, who was coming back to a character that he knew and played so well. I mean, he's one Screen Actors Guild Awards, so many Emmy nominations. What was it like just to, to work with him? It could not have been more awesome. I mean, there was definitely I was there was definitely nerves on my end going into it, but um, I was I also was actually the first person that they flew in uh, for whatever reason, just scheduling. And so there was there was a period of time where you know I'm I'm quarantining like in my apartment days before we're doing anything and no one else is there slowly people are flying in but like they might be staying in different places i also don't have anybody's contact info like we've done nothing and i go stir crazy like you know just so easily and so like i'm you know pacing around my apartment like my my poor extroverted little heart like i'm just i'm losing my mind and uh 
like I said, I didn't have anybody's contact info except for Michael's because he had texted me just like a, just a short suite, like congratulations on getting the role. And, um, you know, this will be great. And so I had his contact info and like my, my stir crazy extroversion quickly overwhelmed my like intimidation of like, Oh my God, it's Michael C. Hall. And I just texted him like, Hey man, like want to hang out? (laughs) (laughs) And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, we spent a day, we had lunch and just sort of got to know each other. And, um, after that, it was like, okay, great. Like uh, this, you know, you're an amazing person and like a generous actor. And just this, this is going to be, this is going to be a blast. And, um, God, he made it, he made it so easy to, to work, to act. I mean, it was just like, yeah, like I say, he's, he's, he's incredibly generous and just so, so versatile and, and fun. And, you know, he's, he's, and he's so introverted. And so I, I remember thinking initially, you know, he's, he's got a, he's got a mean, like resting bitch face. Like he's like, looks like Dexter. It's like, oh, it's, you know, he's, he's quiet. It's like, but as soon as you get to know him, like he's a, he's the, he's the coolest, most fun person. Um, and so like the scenes that were the scariest for me um, going into it, I knew that, you know, no matter how neurotic I was going to feel um, once we started, I could just, I could, I could look at Michael and he was always going to anchor it um, both as a character, as Dexter, because he's so good and it's so easy to play off someone that's fantastic, but also as an actor, because I knew he was, uh, he was just going to be there for me. Like he, he cared about the story. He cared about me. Um, and I just, it could have been more wonderful. He's an amazing actor, an amazing friend. Did he have advice for you on how to play someone who's, you know, sort of a sociopath at their core? I mean, or, or what did it take for you to, to, to get into that character? You know, you know, what did you study or learn to, to feel that way? Oh, I mean, I, I think in terms of, I definitely, I definitely did a lot of just staring at Michael, like on and off set of like, how does he move? How does he walk around, eat, you know, uh, what's, what's the character business I can steal from him or whatever. But, um, I mean, in the show, he's Dexter studying Harrison a lot, trying to figure out like, is he like me? So it's, it's interesting that you sort of studied him (laughs) in reverse. No, a lot, a lot, a lot of just staring at each other. (laughs) Um, but uh, in, I don't know, yeah, in terms of just Harrison's kind of his own monster, his dark passenger, I, I think, it, or being a, being a psycho, I, it, was, it, was very, it was very much less like, you know, how do I become a psychopath or how do I, you know, become someone who is willing to kill someone and more just like really sitting with all of the, all of the, you know, trauma and like crap that Harrison has gone through and all of the questions that he has, all of the things that like have affected me in my past and all the things that I'm pursuing in my future, the answers that I want from my dad, you know, the, the, you know, can I, the, can I reconcile my own questionable, you know, urges? Am I a monster? You know, and can I get that answer from my dad? Um, and just like, and like kind of, you know, I feel like the writing does the rest of it. You know, I just, you, you see, there's always just sort of a storm roiling inside of Harrison. It's just, just Ha- and, and the writing does a lot of that too. And so to just have a little bit of just a concept of what he's going through and what he wants, and then being quiet, it's it's going to come off as sinister. It's the, it's going to make the audience lean in because the writing's so good. Um, just, I just I, all I had to do was was you know sit and listen and and be in the moment. And uh, no, and the writing did the rest. What well, what was the most difficult? Um, type of scene for you to shoot while you were on set? Ah, most difficult type of scene. I mean, it's, I think it's really easy to say the easiest answer is, is the end, is the last, is the last scene. Um, because A, that's just such a monster scene that, you know, I, I found extremely intimidating when I, when I read it, I was very excited, but also like, oh, can I, <laughs> am I going to be able to do that? Um, but also because we, we cross boarded the entire show. So we shot it way out of order. Uh, we had to get all of our exteriors done first because of weather, we were chasing snow. We needed, um, we needed it to be cold. We shot all the outdoor scenes. And so uh, that, that scene, I think was like, you know, 
day 13 of like a 119 day shoot. So like, it was like, we, you know, we're going to have you shoot the, the, the climax of the show without any of the context of, you know, your relationship or the things that you've been through together. It's like Michael and I have just met each other. We've shot like two or three scenes together and they did front load some of our really difficult stuff. Like my very, very first day we did the, the scene with the therapist where I sort of, you know, pour all that pain out on Dexter and reveal that, you know, I know that my mother was, was killed by a serial killer. Um, so we did have a little bit of stuff under our belt, but like, it was so scary going to that scene and thinking like, there's so much that leads up to this. Like, what if I, what if we shoot it? And then we do all the stuff before and we get the context. Like, oh, I miss, I miss this part. You know, I, I would have framed this differently or felt differently about this in this moment. And I just, I hope the puzzle pieces fit together. Um, like, so that was definitely challenging and, and, and maybe just scary and just intimidating. Um, this is all, also, this is all very much sort of a first time thing for me. It's not my first time on a larger set, but like definitely my first time um, carrying that much weight on a set. So everything was a little new and everything was a little scary, but that was, uh, that, that, that definitely instilled a lot of, <laughs> a lot of fear in me, uh, leading up to, it. and then after I'm thinking after for a long time, like, man, Oh, I hope I didn't blow it in the ending. Like <laughs> months later. <laughs> Did you know, so you know about the ending as soon as you got the script. Cause I spoke with Clancy and he was like, I didn't know about the ending. Cause I was dead by then. So, but they, but you were aware of, of what was coming as soon as you booked this. <laughs> <laughs> I was aware and I was not aware that other people were not aware. <laughs> <laughs> did you spill so, the secret? I totally did. Uh, but by <laughs> totally by accident, like, um, I, I didn't, it did, and it, for plenty of people, not everybody got the last episode, but there were plenty of people who did get the last episode and just the last, like, like 10, 15 pages were just redacted. And I didn't know that, like mine just weren't redacted. I was like, oh, everybody has this. And uh, I was with Johnny Sequoia um, who plays Audrey. And we were, we were hanging out, I was like, oh my God, like, how about that ending? She was like, yeah. And I was like, I mean, like, I just, I just shoot him. She was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, oh no. And she was like, you, you like, you know, she totally freaked out. Um, and I, and I, and I realized like, oh wait, you don't, we don't, you don't have that. And so then I, then I had to fully spill it to her and I was like, you cannot tell anybody else. And of course other people later are like, so wait, do you have the ending? We don't have the ending. Like it was, <laughs> it became, it became a thing. I'm, I'm so glad we, you know, like that we got it done early on, uh, or, or it would have been a, it would have been eating at me like <laughs> the entire show, uh, ramping up to it. <laughs> There's definitely been fan chatter and and some things going around. You know, people would be interested in perhaps a spinoff of, of Harrison. Would you be interested in something like that if that were to ever come your way? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that would that would be. I mean, like this. I, I've never gotten to uh, explore a, a character. You know, this this complex for for this long to like get to kind of live in a character for for six months. Mm -hmm. um and not only live in a character for six months but like be discovering more you know new pieces about it you know every day you're, you're you're doing something that you hadn't done before um and you're just you're you're getting to just further and further map it out so to and this i, I love harrison like he's such a such an interesting character and he's, he's there are things i love about him and things that i'm like oh that's just like me and then there's so many things that i'm like this could not be farther from myself and i also want to explore that um yeah. So, oh my God, no, to get the chance to just further like map this interesting, complex human being out and like, and be on TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That would be, no, I, I'm definitely showtime, like definitely down for that. Um, <laughs> and you've gotten, I mean, you had the good Lord bird um, come out and then now you have got Dexter. And so what has this been like for you? You know, how did you realize you wanted to become an actor what was sort of your break into the industry you know what was what was your path uh i mean i was someone who i was one of those kids that was like i would be an actor like from like a really really early age um okay. and you know it was was you know very heavily involved in it in like middle school and then like that 
you know, transition to like children's theater, community theater, which I just thought was the coolest thing. And uh, right about when I started high school, I did my first like professional productions, a theater company in uh, Franklin, Tennessee called Studio 10. Um, and like they were doing a production of The Sound of Music. And I was like one of the little, one of the little Von Trapp kids. Um, and uh, I remember that experience being so fun and so like accelerated and like professional. It was like, it was unlike any, you know, it was totally unlike community theater. When I was used to in school, it was so much more intense and I loved it. And then I was like, oh my God, wait a minute, I'm getting paid to do this. I think it was, you know, I was getting paid like 200 bucks a week, which for like an eighth grader was like, I was Scrooge McDuck. Like it was, it was insane how much money that was. And I was like, I would, I would pay to do this. Um, and I'm getting paid to do this. This is insane. Like I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing nothing but this. Um, and then really committed in high school and um, applied just, you know, just to, to drama, like great drama programs, conservatories, and ended up at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, repping the home team. Um, and they, uh, they, kicked my ass and like so, some people don't need uh some people really don't need acting school like plenty of like amazing actors you, you just kind of got that sauce and you can just have that connection in listening or whatever and uh not, not i was not that person at all um i needed to get my ass kicked that was very much like a oh my god like I'm, I'm i have high energy and like just enough charisma that i can dance around on stage and get people to look at me and like turns out when you're doing you know dramatic realism like that doesn't really play <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, no, I spent, I spent, um, four years at UNCSA getting my tail whipped, uh, which was awesome. Um, always, obviously not always easy, but like, could not be more grateful for that place. And my, and those teachers and my peers, like such a, such a cool place. And I, and, you know, at the end of, at the end of college, it's a big showcase industry, people, agents, managers, some producers, cast directors, we did it in New York and LA and Chicago and Atlanta. Um, and I just sort of went into it going, like, I'm probably going to move to Atlanta. I've worked there before. I'll, I'd rather be a bigger fish in a smaller pond and do some local stuff and get my, my resume kind of beefy before I go to New York. Cause no one's going to, no one's going to be interested in, in me in New York. It's just, it's not going to happen. My, my class is so freakishly talented. I just was like, this, it's not going to happen for me. And, um, was just very, was just very fortunate. I mean, I had a good showcase, but like, so did everybody. And um, I, I signed with uh, Gersh and Authentic, wonderful, wonderful agency, wonderful management company. And um, kind of right off the bat, was just getting sent, sent in things, which was just such a blessing to like, get to get out of school and to meet, you know, even though I'm not working, I'm working because I'm, I'm getting to read new things that are coming in and try my hand at auditions definitely like rooms that were way too big for me coming out of college it's like oh my god fast and furious 11 like it's <laughs> um so yeah it's, it's sort of been a relatively kind of straight shot uh to where i am now which is is, uh, is such a such a blessing and I'm, I'm glad it's i'm glad i've had the opportunities that i've had it's it's been it's been really cool I hope it continues to be cool. <laughs> well, it certainly is paying off. Um, Jack Alcott, congratulations on Dexter New Blood. Best of luck to you and the entire cast and crew of the Showtime series at this year's Emmys. Viewers watching can head over to goldderby.com, make your own awards predictions, beat our top experts, and watch more interviews with top contenders. And Jack's, Jack, thanks again for speaking with Gold Derby today. Thanks so much for having me.